How do we set the right price for our product or service? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of ideas here, friends, especially for your own business ideas. Well, we have the cost base, all right? We have our we have our fixed cost. That's everything that our business operates on. That's well, well the fixed is your 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 rents for your building, uh, uh, possible full-time employees, uh, equipment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Your variable costs are what actually cost you. This is just for, you know, having an organization, uh, a place to go to. This is the actual costs or the cost of goods sold for that product. What type of material, supplies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's the total cost. All right. So establishes a floor for pricing. Obviously, this is my total cost. If it's my total cost for for my product is twenty dollars, uh, I just can't make any any money at eighteen, and I can guarantee you, you couldn't make any money at twenty five dollars either. You you would still. Uh, it, we haven't even talked about different expenses those were just costs just different general expenses so but at least that's the floor at least that's the floor I think for the young entrepreneur the small entrepreneur selling a product we want to look at gross margin pricing we got to at least come up with a point and so to get your gross margin pricing for those who've taken accounting it's your selling price minus your cost of goods sold all right and you divide back by your selling price so if we just take a quick example um, we have a product that sells for a hundred dollars it costs you to make that product all right that's on the shelf or online and uh, so 60 to uh, to produce it so you have a hundred minus 60 and you divide it right back by your selling price so 40 divided by 100 so you, you can get a percentage this way is a 40 percent gross profit margin now is that a profit margin full net profit no, because you have expenses, all right? You have depreciation. You have all sorts of office expenses. Uh, yes, there may be different salary expenses, lots of expenses. So that number, self-employment tax, is going to go down very quickly, okay? Now, it can be done on a single unit or the entire company. Let's, let's look at it again. All right, you're saying this. I'm, I'm selling, I'm buying a product and reselling it. Uh, what, how do I get a 60% margin, what would be my selling price? So, we would take this. We know our product costs $50, and I want a 60% gross margin. This is probably, this is the way to do it. So I do 50 mine, divided by one minus my gross margin, 0. 0.60. So 50 divided by 0. 0.4, my selling price is $125. That gets me the 60% gross margin. This is where we need to live. All right, in, in our business ideas, we need to live at least at the 60% gross margin because there's probably other expenses in our business that we have act, actually forgotten. We haven't incurred them yet, but you will, and uh, you want to be able to absorb the, have a cushion to absorb those. So if we wanted a 70% gross margin, I'm liking that. $6 for the product, all right, okay. So 6 divided by 1 minus 0. 0.7 is 6 divided by 0. 0.3, a 70% gross margin profit. And that, that product would sell for $20. Now, why do we need to stick in this range right in here? For this reason. Walmart operates on about a 30 to 35% gross margin. Now, how can they do it? Because they just have such massive volume. They can, they can hit it that way. Uh, you cannot get in a price war with, with an organization like this. They can just bury us down. Now, we're going to have to do something a lot more to get that 60% gross margin. We're going to have just to be absolutely amazing in the product or service that our business is selling. Here's why we like gross margin pricing. And again, I've gotten most all my research is from, from our, our textbooks, from great internet sources, from Inc., from Fast Company, uh, small businesses. So... Um, I'm getting their information and just giving it right back to you. You know, you can do a price increase. Wouldn't, wouldn't we love that? So if I increase my prices 5% and I had a 50% gross margin, I could sell 9% less and still maintain my same profitability. Sweet. If I had a 20% increase on my price and I had that, I was originally at the 50% gross margin, I can sell 30% less 
and still maintain my profitability? Well, that's nice to know. And sometimes if we do increase prices, we may have less sales, but we also may have less cost and overhead and also in uh, employees and so and, and work to do. Now, this is if we increase. Now, we know we live in that Walmart mentality where it's low prices, low prices all the time. Give me your better deal. What happens if we decrease our prices on a gross margin? Is it an inverse relationship? Because it's going to be. I decrease 5%. Well, who cares about 5%? You know, well, that doesn't get us out of bed in the morning to go to a sale. Let's look at a 20% reduction in prices, okay? And these are some of the margins right in here if we were operating. And so that's why we got to get well above a 40% gross margin. It just doesn't pay. A 20% reduction in price. Okay. At a 40% gross margin, what do I have to do? 100%. I have to double my sales in order to maintain the same profitability. So I sell 100 units at, units at 40 percent gross margin reduce my price by 20 percent I must sell 200 units to maintain that same gross margin dollars let's look at this if I sell a hundred units at a 60 percent gross margin okay now that's what I like right I reduce price by 20 percent I only need to sell 125 units okay so that's so that's 25 more units to gain the same profitability so I don't have to do as much work right in here. The key, you got to maintain high prices. Okay, we can go down, but if you're going down from here, you're dead. You, you just, you know, just hang it up. You, you, you're not going to make any money. Uh, we got to do something different. We can't just compete on price. Our marketing mix, our ideas have to dictate we, that we can sell at a 60% plus gross margin. Now, wait a second. That's great, Randy, but I'm a consultant, okay? I'm an independent creative sort. Um, how do I price that? And I, and, and I hope you are. I think many of you are going to be able to be consultants. <laughs> Obviously, after my great uh, tutelage, uh, you're all marketing experts and business experts. But maybe you want to do that. Maybe you're going to do a little bit of both. You're going to have a service and, and you'll sell a product. All right? Design services, you know what I mean. So here's a great way to look at that pricing model services. Take your desired salary that you like. I see this too often, my friends. Maybe we're in college and uh, you are desktop publishing. You're, again, social media, and you're doing things for people. And you say, you know what, I'll, uh, I'll charge you 25 bucks an hour. Uh, you're, you're hurting yourself because you become very good at that, and then you want to do this full time. And they say, well, well hey, uh, you know, Zoe, you said you were charging $25 an hour. Uh, you want $100 an hour now? I'm not, I'm not buying that. So I know from experience, because I did that in college, in my landscape services, and then when I tried to do it on my own, I had to absolutely erase those customers I was working for and get brand new ones because they thought I was always going to work for, for nothing. So your desired salary, figure out your overhead costs, your desired profit margin, an amount of billable year uh, hours in a year so we can come up with an equation okay so determine salary you want you got to calculate your overhead costs well you, you may have rent all right well you could be working out of your apartment you could be working out of your home use that that's a number maybe you're actually going to go and uh, rent some office space again I, I think what we want to do is figure out what office space we would have to rent and put it in there and still work at home. Maybe we're going to go to WeWorks if they're still in business. I know Dallas, uh, the city of Dallas has Dallas Entrepreneurial uh, Center where you can literally rent out some creative space for very little a month. Equipment, insurance, travel, supplies, etc. That's what we want to figure out. Now we need a profit margin too. You're, you're not doing this for free, you know. Uh, you're your own boss and of course that means there's some different taxes that are going to be applicable to you. So at least a 15% profit margin. You may say 25%. Fantastic. And then let's look at billable hours. Remember, 25 to 35% of your time is not billable. Unless you're a big-time lawyer. Then you just bill in your sleep. But for most of us, it's not because it helps us get a better equation. So again, fleshing it out. So you are going to be a creative digital medias designer in social media managing. Great. You say, I want at least a $70,000 salary. 
okay? Uh, you, you do believe you can work very, very lean, all right? It may be out of your house, but let's just say a grand a month of your overhead cost, $12,000. And you decided on a 15% profit margin. Now, you took billable hours. Remember, there's 2,000 hours in a year. Let me go back here. And you took about 25 to 35% of that time out. So you don't bill at 2,000. You bill at 1,560 hours. Use that as the equation. So we take the 70, all right, and we take the overhead costs. That's $82,000. Always put your costs in there. And now we multiply that by 15% profit margin. It gives us another $12,300. Add the 82, that one and that one together. We get $94,000. And we divide that by your billable hours. So now you have a much better rate. You're going to say, I'm going to charge $61 per hour for my creative services. Versus just thinking up a wild ass number like, yeah, man, I'm $32. Okay. Well, you're really going to shortchange yourself. This would put you on track for that. Now, at least you have a number. It, it, it gives us a good starting point. Let's say a company wants to hire your services and they want uh, 20 hours per month. Okay, so if we simply did the 20 hours per month, if I can get my calculator out here, that comes out to $1,220. And you can say now, all right, I'll give you, that's my normal rate, but if you, bill, if you book me for these 20 hours a month for the next year, I will bring it to $1,000 a month. I'll give you a package deal. Understand? This really ought to help you out and for your services that you're going to charge for. And again, you can use a combination of both. How do we maintain a high price? How do we position that? We need to position against our competition so we can charge a premium price. So let's look how we can do that. An excellent way is the competitive landscape table. The competitive landscape table basically puts your competition, and as many of you know, I did manage and was a minority owner of Glade Gardens in the 1990s, and we were a full-service garden center. And during this time, Southlake, Colleyville, even Grapevine, and some of the HEB was still developing very, very hard and lots of new homes going in. And so we had a great opportunity to expand and grow our business, but we had three large competitors, Walmart, Lowe's, and Home Depot. And they came in really looking at this market uh, to capitalize because, hey, if we can sell you lumber, if we can sell all the things you need and your plant material for your, uh, for your house, then you never leave our store versus coming to a just a specific specialty store. So we put right in here, this was what we would call your critical success factors. What do you need to stay in business? And so all the things that we did was their service, design, installation, maintenance, the plant selection, specimen plant selection versus just standard low price and high. Let's see where everyone was positioned. Well, Home Depot did not do, or Lowe's, or the big ones. They don't do service, design, or installation. We certainly did. We did the service. We did the landscape design. That was my specialty. And so we could go out and have a new constructed house, and we would do all the landscaping from design, installation, and even many times maintenance. Very few were competing in that space, and that's what, that's what this is. What space are we competing in? And so standard plant selection. Well, sure, you know, you can get just your basic shrubs at, uh, or flowers at Home Depot, Lowe's, and Walmart. And I'll, I'll be honest, they've got a pretty good selection but they don't carry the specimen plant selection. We were ordering from California all the way to Connecticut. We, we had a vast number of suppliers we could use, and so they were very instrumental in helping us build our business. And so the low prices, yes, that's what these big players do, but we went high price. Callaway's did too, so that was our nearest competitor, Callaway Nurseries, and then we had high prices, and so that allowed us because we had all of these check marked, these success factors that at the time our customers wanted, 
we were able to really thrive in a very cutthroat environment. So, can you do this for your marketing plan? Again, pick out two or three of your competitors. Now, if you're doing Sophie's uh, vegan food truck, all right, you can pick other food trucks that you might come across or, or even restaurants. Food trucks is a little bit interesting because they, they, the research uh, is a little difficult in the local area to find out what food truck is at what place. But, but certainly, we could look at different restaurants and different catering. And since she's doing vegan Latin American and Tex-Mex food, I think she has a very interesting space where she's going to compete in. And I think she can get that high price. Uh, again, the events, the parties, the, uh, the great food and cuisine that she's going to have, match it up. That we, that's some of the success factors. And if you're doing your own marketing plan, what is it going to take for you to be successful? That's just a critical success factor. Put it down there and see who else is doing it and where you can, you can compete, where you can find your space. And a positioning map looks like this. It just sets it right in this area. There's a the high price. There's your specimen services. This was a nursery business. Uh, this is all the garden retailers positioning map that was that we were competing against. Again, the big mass merchandisers were low price, low service. Okay, we were high price, high service, and Callaway's was next to us. But we felt we were different than most everybody else out there. There's a uh, a pretty cheap. I don't think they're in business anymore, but another independent garden center that uh, just sold really cheap stuff. And so they did add some services. I think they delivered the product. Uh, and they were on the low price side. So this is where we were going to compete. So we could charge that high price, but we had to back up everything we did with the amazing uh, set of services that our customers wanted. Pricing for services. Many of you, if you open up a business, will probably, you, you can easily open up a service business, okay? Because again, you can do it out of your home, your backyard, uh, very low cost, opening up a service. So. Can you add value pricing to your service? Now, I did mention that I was responsible for landscape design for Glade Gardens, and and, and we know we, we, we kind of ad hoc that together, which just means we just flew by the seat of our pants, and we said, wow, so many people are coming in. Tell you what, we will basically do $150 for a landscape design. And basically, this is what it looked like. All, your, all, all the materials you're gonna need, and we did a pricing list and told you, you know, uh, for the whole project. And, and uh, for a while, it was working great until I got burned by uh, a friend of a friend. And so don't ever do business with friends. And it was our biggest project. It was going to be about uh, $30,000 because we had to have a pool put in. So we, we subcontracted out pool and, and patio work. We had irrigation coming in. It was a massive design. It was a brand new home in a very nice neighborhood in the Colleyville area. And, and this was it. And it was going to be in, in January. So it was a great time for us to do it before the big spring season hit. And I had done so much work, you know, and uh, was really proud of this uh, uh, of this project. And we we're starting on a Monday in January, and we were pulling all the amazing plant selection. I get a phone call from the wife, and she says, "Hey, Randy, um, well, we found a landscaper down the road who uh, who can do this for a lot less money. So we're going to go with him. But thank you for all the work you did." And hung up. Yeah, you learn lessons in life, and that was a tough one to swallow because we had we had charged almost nothing. I mean, 150 bucks at the time. Yes, it, it is uh, in the 1990s, so that's maybe 300 dollars still. And I noticed some other customers doing the same thing. I went back and looked at some of the designs I had done, and we weren't getting the business. I mean, the full installation, but they were going to different areas. It's always good to have a diversity of friends, my friends, and and I. And I mean more than just because we are looking a little bit different, but uh, how do you think differently? I was, you know, crying, uh, upset of what had happened, and my sister runs an arts council, and so uh, the, uh, we're talking, uh, visited her the next weekend, and yeah, my, my big boss, who was the big owner, we, we, were, we were both upset. We, we knew we'd made a mistake, but uh, we'd put so much work into that. And so... Uh, talking with some artist friends of hers, she said, well, you know, Randy, what, what this is, this is artwork in our opinion. And so here's how we charge. We, we charge a, a high upfront price that they have to commit to. 
and then we get paid in different installments. And so you should charge a whole lot more from that. And then you can maybe give them a credit if they do business with you. And so all of a sudden I go, well, look, let's put that into practice. So all of a sudden the new strategy, which went into effect like a week later, was a thousand dollar landscape package. That was our minimum price. Now, we will give you out of that, once we're finished with it, $700 will be credit for materials. Because you could go to a certified landscape architect. Very few people are going to pay just $1,000 for a design. Okay, $700 is right in there for your materials. Okay, again, that takes some pain out of that price. Again, my friends, this is in 1995, so be asking like two or $3,000 now, but having 70% of that for your materials. Um, $1,000, we'll credit everything back. If we do the project, because these projects are going to be around ten dollars to $12,000, then that is just subtracted from your final price. So essentially, it is free. That's how we repositioned it. Customers perceived a higher value, and even better than that, we were able to, we, to, to, we protected our work and we weeded out marginal customers. There's always someone coming in, hey man, can you give us a landscape design? And, and, and running off with it. So those people are like, oh no, we, we, we can't afford that. So we got, a, we got better projects, we got better customers. It went right in line of our marketing when we were changing over to a very prestigious garden center. So think about that. Don't undercut yourself, get your high price. And then again, ease it by saying, hey, you know what? I'll give this back as a credit if you use my services. And then it can all be credited back because the projects are gonna be a large amount of money. Protecting your work and pricing your service.